Hey guys and welcome to another relatively short repair video. This one is about the Fai Hong PoE29U-1AF PoE power injector. This is the small version, not the PoE plus injector, this is just a regular PoE one. And this is not a hugely expensive thing, it costs like 40 bucks, so it's not really necessary to just repair one of these if it fails. But who knows, if you are working on a project and you want to finish that, you might not wait some days until the replacement arrives, so you might want to give the repair a try. And if it's the same issue that I had, it's quite a simple repair, so you might want to follow along. As always, if you do so, you're doing so at your own risk. This is a mains powered device, this is a harmful voltage, so you should know what you're doing when you're opening this device. Whatever you're doing, you're doing so at your own risk. So to open this unit, just turn it around and remove these three screws. These two screws are hidden beneath these rubber feet, so just undo the rubber thing and then do them. And then undo the screws. These are regular Torx head screws. I don't remember the size, but it's a standard Torx, so you shouldn't have any problem find, uh, finding out which one. And once you have undone these, you can open the case. Be careful, you still need to pry it apart because there are some clips holding it in, holding it together, but it should be relatively easy. And once you've opened the case inside, you will find this PCB. Note that also the mains plug is just loosely inside the case, so you can take that out with the PCB. And what you see on the PCB is mainly the DC-DC converter that takes the AC input, rectifies it, and then transforms it to 56 volts. And then afterwards, there's this green PCB, which contains all the logic that does the negotiation with the PoE load. And then if everything is fine, switches the PoE load on. This only happens if the PoE load is fine, so it doesn't have any short circuit or any overcurrent or whatever. So it's usually not that easy to kill these things, these uh, PoE injectors. But there is a way, and in that case, in, in my case, it was when you have the load connected and it's working and it's powered up, and then you apply a short circuit on the load, that can kill these PoE injectors since they're not able to switch off fast enough. What you need to do now is unsolder this green PCB. It has seven pins on the bottom, so just turn the big PCB around, unsolder all these and take the green PCB out. And when you've done that, it should look something like that. So you have these seven, seven pins on the bottom and these control ICs. And the area we're interested in, which failed, is this here. And what that is, is a shunt resistor that is used to measure the current that is delivered to the PoE load, which is critical in PoE because um, by assessing the load and assessing the load current, the logic knows that the PoE load is fine or not. So this shunt resistor has to be there and has to be correct. And it is a 0.25 ohm or 250 milli ohm shunt resistor. And when I opened my unit, I found that these resistors here, they were burned, so they had brown burn marks in this inside and you couldn't even read the rating properly. But I still figured out that it was, it was actually two resistors with 0.5 ohms that they used. 1206 SMD resistors, but since I did not have these lying around, I just had one ohm resistors. I just took four one ohm resistors and stacked them on top of each other. So what you see here on the left side, there's two resistors stacked and on the right side, there's also two resistors stacked. So that's four resistors, one ohm, giving me also 0.25 ohms. I soldered them in, double checked the value and then put everything back together. When soldering, you have to be a little bit uh, careful and you have to have a proper iron because on this side there is a big power plane on the other side of the PCB so you have to apply quite a lot of heat to get the sort of flowing here and what happened in my case is that there is now a short circuit between these two uh, ends but this is no problem since these two, end, two ends are always tied together the same goes for these so you don't have to be that careful you can also just connect them all up with a big block of solder it doesn't matter just be careful not to touch these smaller resistors here, don't mess around with them. And yeah, as long as you have a big enough iron and enough heat, you should be fine soldering these in. As I said, in, I used four times one ohm. You can also just use two times 0.5 ohms as they did, or you can put a single 0.25 ohm resistor, but then make sure it's rated for the proper current. So it should not be 1206. It's just that it should then be a bigger watt than bigger one that can handle, let's say 0.5 watts or something. Yeah, and once you've done that, you can put the unit back together. So solder the green PCB back into the other PCB, put the PCB back inside, put the screws back in, and then just try it out. I can of course not guarantee you that this will fix your unit or that this is the only issue that your unit has. 
Curiously, when I did this fix, this on LED on the front doesn't come on anymore, but honestly, I don't know if it ever did, so it might have been broken right away. I don't really care about. All I know that after I replace the shunt resistors, the unit is working fine again, so it's able to deliver PUE, it's able to power up loads again, and this is all I need. So I call my unit fixed at this point. I hope that this video might be useful for some of you. Um, I hope that you also might run into this pro problem and then be able to fix it this way. This is, as I said, not a hugely complicated and not a hugely interesting video, I know, but when I looked for this issue and I looked for a video, I didn't find any, so I thought I'd just do one myself. Yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.